Hello, my name is Nathan McDonald. I'm with the Koretsu Forum, and we're here today at the Future and Review Conference. And uh, we have James from Atfield Sciences. Welcome. Thank you. Congratulations on your Firestarters uh, selection. Thank you very much. Uh, it's great to be to here. Welcome to the big show here. It's our 12th <laughs> year. And so just another crop of great companies to uh, promote through the conference and get their message out to our uh, online uh, viewers as well as uh, the audience members here today. So please, if you could, just get us started. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background, the company, kind of how it came to be, and uh, you know what you're hoping to get out of the conference here this week. Sure. Um, so I was uh, doing my PhD at UC Santa Barbara, uh, and I was studying flexible plastic solar panels, which are kind of cool. Uh, you make a paint and you can pour that paint on a surface and then hook some electrodes up to it and collect solar energy. Um, kind of complicated technology. Uh, it's lots of layers, um, lots of different interfaces, um, very, very complicated structures. Mm -hmm. um, but they're, they're thin films, uh, they're, so they're very thin uh, materials. And uh, one day I happened to be traveling back and forth from Santa Barbara to Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory and thought to myself, man, this is, this is produce country. Uh, you know, I wonder if there's anything we can do uh, with these coatings to help prevent produce spoilage. Um, not using the same types of materials, but using the same, uh, same thin film idea. So I uh, kind of went to the drawing board and said, you know, what, what kind of materials could we use to do this? Uh, and so we started uh, designing um, coatings, basically, so we take plant extracts, so the stuff you're not eating, so like stems, leaves, scrape skins, orange peels, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, we blend them up and then we extract from that a subset of molecules that we then turn into a formula that we apply to the surfaces of fresh produce in order to extend shelf life. So it's like an organic preservative for produce, uh, it's kind of taken from the idea of you know thin film solar panels. Uh, so it's kind of kind of a stretch, but uh, and you're, if you're in the materials field, you know it's all it's all organic molecules. So it's uh, it it seems like a stretch, but uh, it makes sense to us. Wow! So that's a tremendous combination of different things coming together from the solar film side, and then actually using plant matter yeah. to then create the film. How did you? bridge the gap between those two material sciences and biological sciences to create it, something that would work between them. That sounds like a Yeah, uh, so, breakthrough. you know, actually, I f when I first started discussing the company, uh, you know, I just thought, well, we can just make, uh, you know, thin, thin, poly thin polymer films to okay. protect the produce. Um, but you start talking to people about that and people say, oh, well, I, I don't, I don't want to eat anything synthetic. And you kind of think about that and say, oh, that makes sense. Well, you know, I, I did a, my undergraduate in biomedical engineering, so pulled out the old biochemistry textbooks and said, well, where can we find this in produce itself? Yeah. And you know, where can we find those pieces? So rather than making it synthetically, we just said, well, let's just get it from the stuff that nature's already producing. Okay. Um, and we started working with those materials and uh, came up with some, I, th I think, pretty clever solutions. So really just reinforces nature's existing yeah, you know, e exactly. so the way that it does it. Yeah, the, the, it, it, it's actually quite fascinating when I started looking into this. So the evolutionary adaptation that allowed plants to move out of water and onto land was the growth of this thin polymer coating over okay. their surfaces, and that okay. prevented them from losing water. Um, so that evolutionary adaptation is actually evolutionarily conserved. So almost all land plants yeah. have this coating over the outside of them. Uh, so we just piggybacked off that idea and said, well, plants actually want to produce fruit that will, will rot uh, so that it can feed, feed seeds. Well, you know, as humans, we want to grow produce that will last longer so that we can consume it later. So rather than optimize for de a decay process, uh, we just optimize for increased shelf life. So we're, okay. we're, we're doing it the same way nature does it. Uh, we're just expanding on what, on what nature's done. And so what's the impact of that? How much longer shelf life? What's the end it, benefit? It very much change? depends on the, type, on the type of produce and product that you're looking at. I mean, if you're looking at something that has a very short shelf life and you want uh, an invisible coating, uh, you can do uh, you can do uh, 20, 40 percent extension. Uh, if you're looking at uh, a ready-to-eat product that would spoil in a matter of minutes, I mean you can coat those surfaces with actual the, the plant skin itself okay. uh, to extend them up to the, the the shelf life that they would achieve if they were a whole piece of fruit. So it very much depends on the product and the shelf life of that that particular product as it is. So where are you guys today in terms of the development of the, of the, the science? Have you been able to productize it and have yeah, so customers, or where are you guys at in the next six months that you so to get to? Yeah, so uh, interesting business case for, for us as scientists. 
um, you know, you, you go out and you start talking to customers about what you're doing and you want people to feel very good about what you're doing. So you want to make sure you have all your FDA regulatory mm -hmm. approval in place. And as a company, we said, well, you know, there's some areas where shelf life benefits could be had without having to go through any sort of regulatory approval process. And so ironically for us, the low hanging fruit uh, was fresh cut flowers. <laughs> so we pivoted and we said, well, let's, let's begin with fresh cut flowers because uh, we can really control our own destiny there. Uh, so we have a product now that w are in trials uh, with uh, our, our flower growers in Carpinteria. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that product will be available for sale in the next quarter. Um, and our, our produce products are uh, slightly lagging behind that. So we'll, uh, we're beginning tests in the next six months with, our, uh, with some lettuce growers actually down in uh, down Oxnard. Excellent, excellent. So anything particular you hope to get out of the conference here this week or uh, resources or other things? That, uh, you, uh, you know, we've, we've been really uh, kind of quiet about what we've been doing for, uh, for technological reasons and yeah. I just wanted to kind of get a head start. Um, so kind of being here today uh, and, and this week is an opportunity for us to kind of say, hey, this is, this is what we've been doing behind the scenes um, and kind of uh, introduce that to who we think are some of the most forward thinkers um, on the planet. So it's a, just a great opportunity for us. Um, to kind of tell people what we're doing and uh, and, and and meet meet people who I think have, you know, connections into those those circles of influence that you know could really take appeal sciences to to the next level. Excellent. Well, congratulations again on being a fire starter. You're in Thank the right place to get the word out. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, we'll yeah look that's a great spot. To get the message out to as many people as we can. So, thanks for being here. Thank you very much.